what a great thing, what a great gift that I was given. My gift came about around the age of eight. I was at a barbecue in the backyard, and one of my favorite neighbors, I call him Mr. Oatmeal, I looked at him and I saw that he would die in three days. And of course, being a little kid, I walked up to my parents and said, oh my gosh, Mr. Oatmeal is going to die in three days. Don't ever say anything like that. Oh my gosh, don't think negative thoughts. Oh my gosh. Well, Mr. Oatmeal did die in three days, suddenly, unexpectedly, and he wasn't sick. When I talk about a gift, I can tell you my gift at times scares me, and my gift at times is a blessing. Sometimes I don't want to see the things that I see. And for that reason, I always shut my gift down when I am in public, when I am around people, when I go out to dinner. I have to. First of all, it would be voyeuristic, and it's against my ethical code. But second of all, there are some things I don't want to see. So unless I have a contract with you, an agreement that says, you are here for healing, I may take a look, I do not invade your space. So right off the bat, all of you in the audience, you don't have to worry. Remember, I will randomly select you. You always have the option to say, no, thank you. That said, when people say to me, well, what are you? You're an ER trauma nurse, yes. I'm a medical intuitive, yes. And that means I actually have medical training. I've worked in the medical field. I know medicine, right? And I have the intuitive gift, of course. I'm also a teacher. I teach people how to get on the road to wellness. If I can teach you the things that are creating conflict or difficulty in your life, and you make the choice to do it differently, I am teaching you how to be a more healthy and better person. Why would we want to do that? Well, first of all, um, why shouldn't we be wildly happy? Second of all, let's all be of service. There's a lot of work in the world we need to do. There are kids that are starving and people that need our help. And let's get out there and do something, make a difference in this world. I mean, we're not just here to eat bonbons and sit in the hot tub. We've got things to do. I'm a mover and shaker, and I want people to move and shake with me. In fact, one of my mission statements is I want to bring the world to the tipping point of positivity. And what that means is when I work with you one at a time, you will go out and work with maybe six, ten people in your world, and if I can get everybody on that road to positivity, the world will shift in a really good way. And if you've looked around the world lately, you can tell we could use that. So ER trauma nurse, medical intuitive, teacher, what else? People call me a healer. I've often had trouble with that word because it seems to be a catch-all word that everybody uses. For me, when I think of healing, I think of, let me show you what I see that is contributing to a low vibration. Let me teach you how to raise your vibration and what you can do differently. And then my job is done. Your job is to make the choice. Do you want to do it? Do you not want to do it? I will guide you, help you, teach you. But in terms of healing, I do believe that with help, we heal ourselves. And of course, for me, any healing energy, I believe, comes from God or higher power. That's just my belief. So for me, I go around the world and I teach and I guide and I help people to heal. And during all of my events, whether it's a book signing of my books or teaching in a workshop, what I do is I randomly am guided to look at someone like I'm looking at you and I'm randomly guided to talk to you. And I'd say, I see that you have a conflict. And specifically, I'm going to tell you a diagnosis that I call right arm syndrome. And that is something that is in my vocabulary that I've made up. Right arm syndrome means that the part of you that needs to step forward into a decision you've already made but have not acted upon is something you need to do. So specifically, you are in a situation where you are coming out of your marriage and you need to act upon that and make it final. So what happens is when I look at someone, what I see is the right side of their arm is actually dark. So dark arm syndrome is very indicative of someone who knows what they need to do but has not done it. Does that make sense? Let's talk about illness for a minute. You guys know I'm trained in Western medicine. Okay. If I come across a diabetic 
and I will look at you because you are diabetic, yes, okay. One of the first things I'm gonna ask you is, what is your dream? And before you even answer me, I can tell you exactly what this person's gonna say. They're gonna say, dream, dream, mm, I don't have one. Dream, uh, I let it go. Dream, I forget, I got too busy. And that is one of the precursors for diabetes. Someone who has lost the fun in life, lost their dream, either gave it up because of responsibility and they got too busy, or just never had one because they were so busy, whatever it is, I will tell you as a diabetic, you must dream. That is one of the first things you do to get on a healing path. It's not about whether you take insulin or it doesn't matter. You have to look at what do we do on a daily basis that stops us from being our best and healthy selves. Okay, I'd like to open up. Does anyone have any kind of a question they'd like to ask me? Here's the situation. I look at it like an umbrella. If I look at autoimmune, okay, you have multiple sclerosis, you have rheumatoid arthritis, you have lupus, you have all these different autoimmunes. Under the general umbrella of autoimmune, there is a particular way of being that I have found that applies to all. But as we go down and we look at specifically multiple sclerosis, I'd say, for example, they very much are very black and white thinkers and that rigidity just binds them up. If I look at someone with rheumatoid arthritis, for example, I will find them to be very self-critical. They beat themselves up a lot, again, impacting the joints. If I look at lupus, each autoimmune will have a very different and very specific energy signature, even though it all comes under the umbrella. And then each person gets a very specific prescription from me. Let me tell you about some prescriptions. For one woman, when I saw her whole energy signature, I realized she needed to learn to cook. You would have thought I asked her to go bungee jumping off the tallest bridge in the United States. Terrified, scared, cried, wailing, gnashing of teeth, while the rest of you sit there and say, that's it, she has to learn how to cook? Well, what you don't know is that she had trauma around cooking when she was a child. And so for her, it was very traumatic, the thought of even attempting to create food for someone. But it was part of her healing. Let me talk for a moment about readings. When I do a reading on someone, if you come to me and you say to me, you know, should I be in this job? Do I need to move? That's an easy one. I can just see the answer. And the answer is based upon the energy that is sitting around you. Your energy speaks to me, if you will. Okay? That's where I'm getting the information from. It doesn't, you know, float down on a little, you know, butterfly and land in my hands. I actually see it in your energy field. But what I do for people is I actually do a reading and I start somewhere around three years old and I look at the significant events that have occurred. Maybe you almost drowned, maybe you were abused, maybe you were abandoned. And I look at significant things that created certain beliefs in you that are contributing to lowering your vibration. So I will go through your entire life, if you will, and I get a running video that happens in less than three minutes and I can see everything that happened. And then from there, that's how I create the prescription. Now, I've talked a lot about medical, but medical is not all that I do. There are so many people who are disconnected, unbonded, unhappy, can't follow their dreams, don't know what they should do in life. I also work with people to, again, help them be their best selves, their happiest, their joyous, their healthy. I work with people to help them figure out what am I supposed to be doing on this earth? How many people say, What's my purpose? Why am I here? What should I be doing? I can help you with that. So while I started out medically, because that is where the bulk of my training and my experience is, I have gradually moved towards helping people in business, helping people in their lives, their families, to help you have the most enjoyable life that you can. And that is so important to me because if you're happy, then the people around you are going to be happy because positivity is contagious. And if you're happy and you're doing well, 
you might just want to give to another person. You might just want to be of service in some way because you'll have the energy and the desire to do it. So even though I say to you it's one person at a time, I know that when I touch one person, I know you're going to go out and touch at least 20. Any other questions?